Gospel music plays a huge role in the traditional music of Appalachia. Appalachia, a lot of it, especially the southern portion, is in the Bible Belt. Uh, that means that a lot of people who grew up in the mountains of Appalachia grew up going to church. Church and religion was a huge part of the culture. It still is today. We've all heard those stories of bluegrass and country uh, superstars that got their first start singing in church. That's where they first developed that love for music. And that's a pretty common thread, uh, whether you're talking about um, piano music, organ music, guitars. A lot of churches have guitars. Some churches even have drums. Of course, there are the primitive uh, Baptist churches who don't believe in having instruments in the church house, some of those. But overall, a lot of that is a common theme and a common influence of music throughout the Appalachia region, Appalachian region is that gospel music. So many people experience that music on a weekly basis when they attended church with their family. Growing up in a musical family, uh, music was part and parcel of my daily life. Um, and it even still is today, actually, because we still play music together. So probably, though, my first influence was gospel music. Uh, when I was a babe in Granny's arms, maybe I was a little small child sitting in Pap's lap. But so many of those songs, especially the ones that Pap was playing, uh, he was hugely influenced by the Leuven Brothers. So a lot of those songs, when I think about the song Praying, uh, The Great Atomic Power, God's Way of Living, Born Again, The Kneeling Drunkard, Satan is Real, all those songs, I can hear those and just instantly be took back to being a small child again. Even at that very early age, I think even then I began to understand and to realize how important those songs were to the people of Appalachia, uh, especially those old hymns. Um, there's just a pal palatable feeling that you get when, the, when you're at church and those voices are raised in song, raised in worship together, all in one accord. That's just a very powerful feeling. And I think even as a young child, I understood that. Uh, and if you've never experienced that, I would, I would encourage you to slip into a little old country church somewhere and sit on the back row. And it, it's just an amazing, uh, powerful feeling for sure. When I was a little older child in church, you know, when you get to that age where you can sit by yourself and sit with your friends, I had a really great friend named Sharon. Now we went to school together, so we had that friendship, but we had that strong church uh, friendship as well. Her parents and my parents were close friends, so we had that. But we loved to sing. We just loved to sing in the choir. And we loved it so much that each of us, we, we knew the songs, the numbers by heart. So when the song leader would call out a song, we knew if it was going to be one of our favorites and we'd get really excited. Uh, some of the our favorite ones that we really loved was uh, The Prettiest Flowers Will Be Blooming Over There, if you've ever heard that one. Or You Washed in the Blood, that was a really peppy one that we loved. We loved... Um, I want to know more about my Lord, another very peppy one. But we also loved some of the more somber, um, slow songs, more serious subject matter for sure. All of them, of course, at church are serious when you think about the gospel. But we loved uh, Lord, I'm Coming Home, Oh, Why Not Tonight, those kind of sad, somber ones, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, all those we really loved. And we'd get so excited when the song leader, as I said, called out our favorite numbers. And it's funny, a lot of those songs, when I think of them, uh, in my mind, those are the people, those song leaders of the day, whoever it was, those are the people that I hear in my head singing those wonderful old songs of faith. So many of those old songs, the hymns, uh, and even the more uh, contemporary ones that are still old by standards of today, their very lyrics, I think, lend themselves to Appalachian culture. When you think of the major themes of the songs, you know, when you think about God and, and Jesus and the cross and blood and dying, uh, hell even, uh, the dark rivers, you know, crossing the river, the dark valleys, the steep mountains, all those um, kind of things, even loved ones call and come, they really lend themselves to the culture of Appalachia. Appalachia is such a familial uh, culture where we're all tied together and all those important things and also that strong sense of kind of make and do and and figuring out how to cross those rivers and climb those mountains of course if you're a person of faith you're thinking on how to do that with with God's help so all those things really lend um, really lend themselves to the culture of Appalachia even though many of those songs were not definitely written in the Appalachian mountains I'm not saying that by no means I'm just saying that the popularity of those songs and that strong influence of gospel music those those strong themes in the lyrics really lend themselves to the Appalachian culture. In fact, I would go so far as to say the very words they're written with 
uh, also lend herself to the, the, the language of Appalachia, the actual rich, colorful language of Appalachia. Maybe that's because the Appalachian region as a whole has been an isolated area over the generations, not so much today, of course. Um, but that r the rough, rugged terrain made it an isolated region where people, because of the culture, because of the landscape, a lot of different things, decided to stay in those areas for generations. My family's been here for over 10 generations. And, and that same way that it helped them hold on to that wonderful language, the phrases and the words that I love to talk about so much, it also helped them to hold on to those old hymns and that old gospel music, even the more uh, contemporary ones, which are still old, uh, but more thinking about the early uh, 1930s, 40s, 50s, those songs, they're still very popular in my area of Appalachia. One of those old songs that Sharon and I would get excited about when we were girls at church was Oh What a Savior, and it was written by Marvin P. Dalton in 1948. It's a beautiful uh, song of faith. It has just a strong emotion, just real emotion throughout the whole song. And the song leader at that time, that's who I hear singing it in my head when I think of the song, was Dennis McCoy. He has a beautiful baritone voice that just would really do the song justice for sure. I don't have a recording or a video of Dennis, I wish I did, but I do have one of Pap and Paul singing the song several years ago that I want to share with you. They did it very simply, two guitars, uh, but that are wonderful, beautiful family harmony just really shines in this song. Um, and I'm going to let you watch the video, and I hope that you enjoy it as much as I do. And I hope you've enjoyed learning about the importance of gospel music in the whole realm of traditional Appalachian music. <laughs> Yeah. 